You've probably heard the saying, the Bible says what it means and it means what it says and I'm going to take it just that way. Well, I understand where people are coming from when they say that, but do we really? This is my question of the day on the encouraging word. Earlier this week, some friends and I were discussing the book Until Unity by Francis Chan. And we came across a passage early in the book that really challenged us. And I want to share the challenge with you as well, but maybe in a different way than the way it's given in the context. In the context, he's talking about the call to Christian unity from Scripture. And he shares all these passages where the Scriptures tell us that we are to be one, that we are going to live as Christians in unity and that we need to strive to keep the bond of peace and the spirit of unity. And all of these passages, which are clear commands from God about our loving one another and living in unity with one another. And this is what he says in that context. This is on page 25 of the book. Please do not be afraid to take these commands literally. It has become the case that if I take a biblical command about sexual behavior literally, I'm called a conservative and my stance is considered biblical. But sadly, if I take one of these biblical statements about avoiding disunity or pursuing oneness literally, I am called a liberal and my stance is considered soft and cowardly and compromising. That's wrong. We all have to make choices about which parts of the Bible are meant to be taken literally, all of us. I can't tell you every passage that is meant to be taken purely literally, selling all your possessions, plucking out your eye, wearing head coverings. But I can tell you that I'm extremely confident that Jesus' commands to love and be unified and to avoid controversy are meant to be taken literally. Now, I agree with Francis on that point, and I agree that those passages were meant to be taken literally that speak to the unity of the body of Christ. I'm going to expand the challenge, though, as I give it to you tonight. Those, those we need to take seriously, and we need to kind of do some introspection as the church about whether or not we really do that, and the answer is no, uh, but we need to take the challenge to repent and take up that challenge. But it's not the only passage where we have that issue. We like to say, we take the Bible seriously, and as I said in the intro, you know, the Bible says what it means, and it means what he says, and that's what I'm gonna do. But the problem is, do we? The answer too often is no. Uh, you, I'm going to challenge you to uh, address this in this way and to join me because this challenge is very much back to me as well. It's a both side of the camera thing. Uh, I want to challenge you, and I'll do it too, to find a, a chunk of scripture in the New Testament and read through it and make a list. Uh, it can be the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus preaching in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It could be uh, the book of Philippians, the book of 1 John, the book of James. Those are all uh, short letters by uh, two of them by apostles, one by the uh, half-brother of Jesus, James. And read through those and keep a list over here to the side and write down every passage you come across that very clearly God wants us to take literally and seriously and write that passage down. And especially the ones that you notice where you realize, you know, God wants me to take that seriously, but I'm not real sure I do. If there's a passage where it's obvious it's meant to be that way and you have the question, uh, ah, but, but does he really mean especially? Write that one down and highlight it because that's where your prayers are probably going to need to be the most. If there are passages where you go, okay, but I don't know about, I'm not wiggling out of anything. I really don't know if this is meant to be literal. Make that list too. Okay. Make that list. That's some stuff for you to study uh, bigger and later on and really to dig into. But this first list is the one to focus on this week. And I think you will find yourself challenged. I'm going to find myself challenged. But I also think that if we will invite the Spirit of God to guide us into really living as he's called us to live through the word, 
I think we will see amazing changes in our life. And let me just give you one quick example of a passage that could do that. This is Romans chapter 12, much longer letter. Uh, but Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to start just in verse uh, 15. What, what would it be like if you and I took up the challenge, what would change in our home, what would change at work, what would change in our church, in our world, if we just did these few things and took them literally and seriously? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. If we took just that one passage literally and lived it seriously, generously and gracefully, wouldn't we change the world? And then wouldn't we reach people more with the grace of God? And wouldn't we all have a much better week? Sometimes it pays to take those passages literally. God bless you as you go out and do so.